All right, YouTube, if you've been paying attention to the more democratic partisan elements of the media, they'll tell you the DNC's great, Bill Clinton's great, Michelle Obama's great, Hillary's great, Sanders is great. Everything's just a love party of unity. That's not what I'm seeing, of course. I'm, I'm looking at streams and videos taken outside, and I'm seeing that not only are there four or 5,000 Bernie bros protesting still at the DNC itself, there are then splinter groups, sort of the Black Lives Matter movements and some anarchists and communists holding rallies uh, at the, at the uh, City Hall of Philadelphia and elsewhere saying, fuck Hillary. And that was literally what they were chanting yesterday, fuck Hillary, don't vote for Hillary Clinton. Uh, talking about uh, how terrible she is. Uh, the Democratic Party's new slogan, though, should be blame Russia, because that's all they're doing right now. Rather than address the fact that they've got internal emails from the DNC showing a high level of corruption that goes all the way up to Debbie Wasserman Schultz, involves people closely associated with Clinton on her team, rather than address the actual content, what they'd rather do is talk about, oh, Russia might have been involved with this. Now, I found it funny. Every time Hillary Clinton is investigated, they say, oh, wait for evidence, wait for proof, wait for exoneration, wait for the story to be complete. On this, though, the second that the DNC leaks broke, the first thing that the Clinton campaign put out was, oh, well, we think Russia did it. Don't look too much into the emails, folks. Those evil Russians did this. Now, I thought that it was uh, that people on the left typically disregarded Russia as a main threat, were really more fixated on China uh, or on domestic nationalists and stuff like that. Sort of thought, oh, well, yeah, Putin has some problems. You know, he doesn't like gay people and he's like anti-abortion or something like that. But yeah, Russia is not really a threat, just sort of a competitor. We don't have to take them too seriously. Then, of course, the first egg on their face was Ukraine. When, the, when Ukraine erupted into chaos and then the Russians came in and annexed Crimea, of course, that was sort of a difficult moment for them. Now they're d blaming the Russians. It's like, uh, if Hillary is elected, is this going to be good for our relationship with Russia or is it going to push us even further into a Cold War that the President of the United States spent a week ranting about how the Russians had hacked the DNC and were trying to take over our democracy? What this shows, though... Why would they be concerned about democracy, about voting, or about the fair representation of people's wishes in the population at large or at the democratic population at large? Why would they give a fuck about that when the content of the emails clearly shows they don't give a fuck about that sort of stuff? It clearly shows that. Now, I'm not saying that the RNC probably doesn't do similar shit. But this time around, those donors and, and heads of the RNC and all of these various power structures within the Republican Party lost. They failed at stopping Trump. Trump ended up being the nominee. It was fairly clear uh, from everything you heard from Fox News and all of the sort of mainline right-wing media, the blaze and stuff like that, for months and months, it was obvious they didn't want him to be the nominee. At first, they wanted Jeb. Jeb honestly fucked himself. Then they sort of split between those that wanted Ted Cruz as sort of the middleman candidate and those who wanted, like, Rubio, who's sort of the TPP candidate or something like that. And that's essentially what they wanted. The Democratic Party, though, right now, it can't with a straight face look at its followers and tell them, oh, well, there's no corruption here. So instead, it fails to address the issue entirely and gets them all hyped up about how Russia was somehow involved. But there's no evidence that Russia was involved in the DNC leak. And even if it was, who gives a fuck? I thought that if people weren't doing anything wrong, then people have nothing to hide. Well, the NSA certainly takes up that ethos. They gobble up every email, phone call, and text message that's been sent anywhere in the fucking goddamn Western world for years and years and holds that information in presumably unprotected systems because the Chinese managed to get a hold of a bunch of that bullshit. Uh, so, I don't see any problem with the DNC's private details being leaked. Why shouldn't they be public? Why shouldn't people within the Democratic Party understand that their party is lock, stock, and barrel run at this point by a bunch of corporations and big banks who are funding their presidential candidate, uh, who, who purposely attempted to shaft her only main competitor, uh, 
Uh, and the level of collusion, corruption, and stupidity going on at the DNC is legendary. I think the biggest story isn't even the corruption so much as the ineptitude. Not only failing to guard these emails from being hacked in the first place, that's inept, uh, although it's understandable. I mean, it happens to Fortune 500 companies, it happens to government servers, especially those uh, that are not actually government servers but are unsecured civilian systems in somebody's bathroom. Hillary Clinton, ring a bell. It happens. Uh, but inept in that their strategy overall just looks stupid when you read through these DNC emails and you hear them openly talking about how it might be a good idea in some of the more Christian states to question Sanders' faith and say that he's an atheist. That's just stupid. It's a stupid strategy, and the fact that they got caught out making the suggestion in their emails doesn't look good. It doesn't look good for a party that supposedly it rants constantly about the separation of church and state, and it really... Uh, for me, what it does is it just further enforces their uh, my belief in their hypocrisy as well. Because remember, the Democratic Party will go to great lengths to say Christianity uh, has a negative effect on the world, unless it's Pope Francis saying something positive about multiculturalism. Uh, Christianity generally bad, uh, holds us back, uh, hate of gays, hate of abortionists, and so forth which I agree with. I mean, I have no problem with those claims, but then they turn around and the first level of hypocrisy is they don't aim the same criticism at Islam. Uh, they say, oh, well, most Muslims just want to live in peace. Oh, just ignore for a second the fact that they hate gay people more than uh, even the most evangelical Christian groups, uh, let alone for a moment that many of them do support physical jihad, at least in some circumstances, let alone the fact that many of them do endorse Sharia law at least coexisting with a secular state, as we would see in some of these Islamic nations. The second level of hypocrisy is you've got the same sort of people making speeches against the church and state mixing, against religiosity and government, then turning around and attempting openly, admittedly, in their email exchange here, talking about how they're going to use religion as an issue to try to shaft Bernie Sanders. And these aren't even like Clinton staffers doing it, it's the DNC. It's the DNC itself. It shows, yes, indeed, the system was rigged. Now, they tried to rig it on the GOP side. The problem is the methodology that the GOP used by having this weird mix of states where some are proportional, some are absolute, and it depends on which stage of the race you're in, and, and all the other bullshit sort of maneuvering that they did. They designed that after Ron Paul's uh, extreme success. They saw that a fracturing in the party would occur. So they changed the way their system works. They changed the way the delegates were allocated and so forth. Unfortunately for them, Trump realized that they had actually just made it easier for an outsider to win as long as that outsider wasn't completely on the fringe. So he won. On the Democratic side, they used a combination of superdelegates and outright rigging at the DNC level, apparently, in order to stop Sanders. I'm not surprised his fans are upset. Now, we have to realize there are two different types of Bernie bros. There are those that are Democratic partisans who simply thought he was the better candidate. They will vote for Hillary Clinton, and this is the larger group of the two. Then there are those who have either adopted outright socialism <clears throat> or consider themselves progressive and that to be the important reason why they backed him, or those who were caught up sort of in the cult of personality revolving around Sanders. They will not vote for Hillary Clinton at large levels. Most of them, I believe, will back Jill Stein. I think you've already seen the beginning of their migration uh, out of the party. I believe that will continue over the next few days. When it becomes clear that Bernie's on the sidelines, uh, the fact that he was booed at one of his speeches really uh, took hold with these people. I think that in the end, most Hillary, most Bernie supporters will end up voting for Hillary, but it won't be an overwhelming majority. When people say, oh, it'll be 85, 90%, no, it won't, <laughs> not even close, maybe 60%, maybe 65, 70 if she's lucky. Uh, but really, the fact that not all of them are going to migrate back in is really going to hurt them. This happened to Mitt Romney, by the way. Happened in 2012 to the other corporate billionaire candidate, Mitt Romney. Uh, Mitt Romney failed to draw back in many of the Ron Paul supporters. 15, 10 to 15% of the Republican Party voted for Ron Paul within the primaries and the caucuses. They did. 
and when he was completely rejected and didn't even get a speaking slot at the RNC, a lot of those people migrated out. Some of them joined the Libertarians. Some of them voted for Obama out of spite. Most of them just stayed home. I expect a significant proportion, maybe a quarter of all of the Bernie Sanders supporters, just to stay home and not vote because there's nobody they think that's worth voting for that's viable. The more optimistic will be backing Jill Stein, and then the rest will filter out into the other candidacies. I like to think Gary Johnson will probably get a point or two extra. He might end up in the debates. And uh, by the way, if Gary Johnson does manage to crack that critical threshold at which he gets into the debates, if he does accomplish that, all bets are off as far as the end result of the election. Because if he manages to outrank, outflank his opponents at the debate, he could end up gobbling up 20-25% of the vote. That throws everything into uproar. And by the way, he's not siphoning it primarily from the right wing. As we've seen in the last round of polling, Trump just skyrocketed. Now, this has much less to do, I think, with the RNC, other than his acceptance speech. I think it has much less to do with that, and much more to do with the DNC links, the FBI investigations findings in the Clinton case, and things like that, as well as the fact that Bernie Sanders supporters are flocking out of the Democratic Party. If my hunch is correct, Hillary, I don't think, gets enough of a boost from the DNC to seal the deal and actually rise back up above where Trump, wherever he is in a couple of days. Um, I expect him to be a point and a half, two points ahead at that point. I don't expect he's going to falter right away. He'll go up and down. She'll go up and down. There will be times presumably, at least before the first debate, <clears throat> at which Hillary will be back on top. But I don't think that she's ever going to command the kind of margin that she had continuously there for some months. Uh, I think you've seen it even up. It's going to continue being more or less even until the first debate, at which point I predict, and this is just my prediction based on my analysis of their personalities, their ideas, and so forth, I believe that Trump is going to absolutely ass-blast Hillary back to the Stone Age in the first debate. I think he's going to come out hot and heavy and swinging. I think he's going to pummel her. I think he's going to completely destroy her. Uh, at which point I think that a lot of independents, which are already more on board with Trump than Hillary, will continue flocking into his camp by the hundreds of thousands. That gives him the election because it gives him a lot of these states where he's competitive. Florida. Uh, Indiana and Ohio are basically lost for the Hillary camp at this point. Pennsylvania. If you look at Nate Silver's projection now, he's got them almost completely even as far as their odds of winning. Um, a, a week ago, he had Hillary at like, what, 80%. Now it's down to almost 50-50 with Trump occasionally leading Hillary. That's terrible news for Hillary Clinton because I never anticipated that anybody would even take his candidacy seriously until at least the first debate because my prediction was that his entire uh, campaign was going to hinge upon him uh, attacking her significantly and doing a huge amount of damage when he's got the bully pulpit next to her on stage in front of the country. Uh, before, I never expected that he would overtake her in the polling for even a day uh, before that happened, so I think he's doing better than I expected. Not that I expected him to lose. Right now, my prediction is there's a 90% chance Trump's the next president. There's like a 9% chance it's Hillary. There's like a one There's like a one in a 100 chance that Gary Johnson could actually get onto the debate stage and do well enough to take the election. The possibility is there. It's extremely remote. I'm not going to count on it. I'm not even going to bother mentioning it again because it's such a low chance. But then again, a lot of people thought that Trump had that low a chance when the primaries began. So the DNC would rather blame uh, Russia rather than look at its own faults. And need I remind you, of course, Hillary Clinton is the main super PAC candidate this time. It's not, it's not the Republicans like it was in 2012, where Romney was sucking Goldman Sachs money at the same levels that Obama was. And they both take money from the same people. Trump's fundraising right now is like 97% grassroots funded, with some of his own money included in there. He's getting very little money from corporations and banks. This is why I think in the end, a, a more substantial sum of those outsiders and independents will flock to him than will to Clinton. That's about all. Peace out.